It's gonna sound weird, but cute isn't normally a word we use to describe our FPV drones, but this one is just freaking cute. It's just a cute freaking little thing. And today we're gonna to talk about how cute that freaking thing is. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and today we're gonna to take a look at my Odinata 1S build. It may not look so special on the outside, but there's something special about this quad. And what's special about it is that there were two versions produced by Armitan and designed by the designer Crafted Quads. One was for analog. It's a 74 millimeter layout. The other is for HD, which is a little bit wider layout so that you can fit more componenty things in there. I said screw it though, and I crammed all the HD stuff in the 74 millimeter one. Yep, that's right. I'm cramming a 1S walk snail kit with their nano camera, a Darwin 15 amp AIO, 1002 19,000 kV RC and power motors, a full ELRS receiver with the ceramic antenna, and an XT30 plug into a 74 millimeter frame that is not a whoop. Yeah, that's that is exactly what I am doing here. Yeah, it's a little bit special in that it is so compact, but it packs onboard 1080p HD recording, 1080p video link back to the pilot, and as much range as you can get out of an ELRS ceramic antenna receiver on a 1S quad that flies these 550 milliamp hour XT30 ended 1S packs. Because why not? That's why, that's why I did it. Because why not? Because I can and I like flying in my front yard and I wanted something to rip the crap out of my front yard pretty safely. If I run it into a car, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna show you my build today and kind of tell you why you might wanna have something like this in your fleet. My Odonata is packing the RC Empower 1002 19,000 kV motors, slinging Jimfan 1835 props. So this is a pretty small prop size for a quad. This is something that you would actually see on something like a 75 millimeter tiny whoop. In fact, I use the exact same props on my HD0 Mobula 7, which is a 2S quad, but I'm running on 1S for this one. So we're talking about tiny whoop props on an open prop top battery mounted frame, which is actually a lot of fun, but I'll show you later what it flies like. And to power those motors, I am using a Darwin 15 amp AIO without built-in ELRS in this case, because it was actually just really hard to get the built-in ELRS one, and it doesn't have a ceramic antenna on their ELRS board. Instead, you have to pop on either a monopole antenna or a small dipole, or you've got to go with the full Immortal T. And I didn't really want to do that, so, I just opted to add the iFlight ELRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver. However, I would say that that is not the best option for this. It happened to be what I got and I found a way to make it work and the mounting location seems to be fine, but that tower antenna on there just makes me feel like I'm gonna pop it off at any point. Now I have not popped it off. If you wonder about how long they last, if it's placed in a reasonably good spot, which mine is, it is above the stack, right next to the top plate, well out of the way of where most crashes are gonna happen. And in fact, the battery kinda sits over the top of it in most cases, which is probably not the best for the signal reception, but it seems pretty well protected and it works out. Now, if I were going to do this again though, I would probably go with one of the flat ceramic antennas and get a whole different brand of it. Uh, because that was not what I was expecting to open up. See, you, when I looked at the iFlight page for this receiver, it looked like it was a flat antenna. There are just renders, no actual pictures. And when I got out of the box, it wasn't. So I built it with it anyway, because like everyone else, I can't afford to buy two. So anyway, that's what I wound up going with. But that's not the important part. The important part is the video system because I wanted this one to be digital. Even though it sat in the same frame as what analog is designed for, I wanted it to be digital. And for that, I really had two choices because DJI is just too heavy to put in something 75 millimeters and have a good time flying it. We'll get to what this thing actually weighs here in a minute. But I had two options. It was either gonna be the HD Zero Whoop Light or the Walk Snail 1S Nano Kit. And when I looked at those two things, I've enjoyed flying both of them. I have quite a few of both of them, but I decided that I wanted the eight gigabytes of onboard 1080p recording that is offered by the walk snail system because I wanted to take some 1080p HD recording of flying this quad without the need for strapping anything to the top of it. So I went with exactly that, the 1S Avatar walk snail kit from Cadex with their nano camera, just the V1, there is no V2. It just worked out really well. The problem's there. The antenna 
is actually pretty hard to find a mounting place for. And the camera kind of runs into the stack. So you can't get a whole lot of angle out of it, but I'm not a super high angle pilot most of the time, and I'm getting probably around 15 degrees. Haven't actually taken the time to measure it, but it is totally flyable and I'm not too worried about it. I did have to print some different camera mounts because the camera mounts that come in the box are made for a very specific camera and it's not really a box even either. It's more of a parts bag that Armitan sends to you, which is perfectly fine of a frame this size. But I had to print my own, so if you're planning on putting a Walksnail kit in yours or even the HG0 Whoop Light kit, just remember you're probably going to have to print your own standoff mounts for your camera. But at the end of the day, who cares about what all I crammed into it, other than the fact that it's just really cool you can have digital storage on board this to record your flight footage. Anyway, uh, beside that point, the next point is about gravity, because you're going to ask me, how much does this sucker weigh? Yeah, it's small, but man, you packed a lot of crap into it. I did. It weighs 46 grams dry, 47 on a bad day, but 46 grams on most scales that I've tried it on, dry. Now the pack is another 14 grams, so we come out to somewhere around 60 to 61 grams, just depending on how the scale feels at that particular moment. Yeah, it's kind of chunky. It is kind of chunky. I will give you that. Totally is. But I will say, my Mobula 7 HD0, I run the same props on on two S packs, and this flies better by far than that whoop because it's open ducted. Now I could probably yank everything out of that HD zero whoop, put it in a different platform and cut a whole lot of weight and it would fly even better. But let me just show you this flight footage here so that you know that it actually does fly not like a small brick or like chunk of a brick. What do you call small brick? So here you go, this is me flying a 61 gram Chonky Boy on 1S in my front yard. Now there was a slight wind this day, so you're going to notice some bobbles. And just to remind you, there's no black box on this ELRS-less AIO from Darwin. The ELRS version also does not have any black box. This AIO, the 15 amp AIO, does not have any black box for them. So I was having to do all my tuning by ear, by feel, and by video review. So I only got so far in the amount of time that I had been flying this, which is over the past month or so. And I think that it's in a good place. If I fly it inside, it doesn't wobble. Outside in a little bit of wind, it does. And the reason for that is that I decided to build this on the 74 millimeter frame, which due to the lack of width for weight ratio is a little bit less stable in windy conditions. But that was in order to target the smallest quad I could make footprint wise that had enough power to have fun in the front yard. Anything smaller than this would not be fun in my front yard. Trust me, I have done it. I have had small whoops. They are not too fun in the front yard, especially in wind. Now, if I did something crazy with those whoops and put super high KV motors on them and all kinds of other stuff, it would probably be okay. But I am totally into the open prop when it comes to freestyle and the top mount battery. And that's the kind of flying that I like to do. Now, the flight footage that you saw and are now seeing again is not super heavy freestyle. I understand that. And by the way, you are looking at the onboard recording, not the DVR recording, because after reviewing both, they basically looked the same. And if I was able to get my Walksnail OSD on it, you're seeing that too. And if you want to get Walksnail OSD on your Walksnail footage, go down to the link below where I have a tutorial on how to do that, because it's really not that hard. You can put it on either the internally stored or the DVR footage from your goggles. A plus, fun to do. Anyway, you've seen it fly. So you know the thing can fly, and it flies pretty well, given the fact that I was in probably 15 mile an hour wind. That's a pretty average breeze here with a small form factor quad. That is technically overweight for its size class. Even though I'm running 19,000 kV motors, I could be running higher kV motors. But then that impacts the next thing we're going to talk about, which is flight time. Because I know a lot of you out there want your little micro quads to fly for very long periods of time. I am not that concerned with flight time, to be honest with you. I'd rather have... 20 of these and two minute flights, then six minute flights and have a quad that flies just not freestyly fun. So I'm not that person. But what I will say is that I kind of geared this build because I knew it was going to be a little overweight. I geared the KV down a tad so that I could get more efficiency out of it. And that means that it's not as good at freestyle as it could be, but it's also just perfectly fine at doing it when I feel like doing it. In fact, I got an inverted yaw spin just fine with this thing. 
just to prove that I could. But when it comes to efficiency and how long the flight times are, on a normal 550 milliamp hour 1S pack, I can get pretty solid three to three minutes and 15 seconds of freestyle fast flight, low to the ground fast cruising if I want to, but having the throttle pinned pretty far. If I wanna back off and just cruise and play around, I can get four and a half minutes out of it. I think I could probably push it to five minutes if I really wanted to, if I was really laying off of it, just maybe exploring a park or flying around between trees or something at not super high speeds. I think I could probably get close to five minutes. So the reason I built this build in the first place was just to be able to step out my front door and have a crap load of fun regardless of what the weather was like. Whoops are too affected by wind for me because if I walk outside on any given day, my wind is normally at least 15 miles an hour, if not 30, 35 miles an hour. Now I'm not saying this quad will do well in 35 mile an hour wind, but I can promise you it won't get pushed around as badly at 35 miles an hour in the wind as a whoop would. It won't fly as terribly, it won't just choke and fall out of the sky because the wind's pouring over the ducks too quickly. Ducted quad will do that sometimes. I just don't live in conditions that would allow me to fly ducted whoops outside and have any real fun. So I built this thing to counteract that and to have a top mounted battery because that's just the kind of center of gravity that I like to fly. The kind of tricks I like to do, the kind of flying I like to do is conducive to having a top mounted pack. And if you're interested in it too, I am going to have a link to my webpage where I have a full build spec sheet of all the parts I used, all of the weights and measures of this thing, some pictures so you can get some reference, and I will eventually have a wiring diagram and a tune there. Whenever I get settled on the tune, it'll be there too. So the link is in the description below to my webpage where you can find those things for yourself because you may want the same thing. I feel like everyone should have an army of little drones to fly. Maybe not an army but at least one little drone that you can walk out in your backyard or your front yard and just throw out there with a small pack on it that's not menacing. Your neighbors will give no craps about you flying and be able to rip up the front yard to the best of your ability. My front yard is not the best front yard to do it in. As you can see, I got cars in the way. I got bushes in the way. There are no obstacles, but it's still pretty fun to go out there for three to four minutes at a time and just rip a little pack on the Odinata. And... Yeah, I'm going to call this one the Oda Not, uh, because it's not a uh, HD frame. <laughs> it's stupid, but it's what I'm doing. I have made the decision. <sighs> and what has allowed me to make this decision are all the lovely patrons who funded this build. 100% of what was put together here came from patron sponsorship. So thank you very much, patrons, for allowing me to do stupid things so that I can play in my front yard and show you what that's like. Because at the end of the day, we're all just kids playing with toys. And uh, yeah, that that's a whole lot of fun. This toy isn't very big, and it doesn't cross the boundary of not toy. Some of our quads do. But that's exactly what this one's here for. So thank you, patrons, for sponsoring all of this so I could show it to everyone else out there. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the build, feel free to head over to my Discord where I'll be happy to answer them for you if you just hit me up on the Discord or in our Discord server. There are a ton of people over there who are actually very, very, very helpful. And you know, I'm just gonna put this out there. Someone in Australia helped someone overnight two nights ago with a major problem and they actually got the quad in the air today and it worked wonderfully. And I am just so happy to see things like that happen. The community is wonderful, and the people over there on the Discord are just amazing. Thank you all so much for being over at the Discord. And if you're not over there, head over there, because there's a lot of great pilots to meet in that place. And yeah, until next time, stay greasy. I'm going to fly my little quad in the front yard, and I'll catch you later. Like I said, it is 44, I think I said 44 a minute ago, 44 millipeters, 74 millipeters. 74 millipeters. Dang it. Millipeters. Your name's Peter and there are a million of you. You would be a millipeter.